Well, Nate McMillan begins his third season as head coach of the Indiana Pacers with both a new contract extension and rising expectations. Inside Indiana Business Sports reporter Bill Benner sat down with the coach this week as the Pacers began training camp. And uh, Bill, as always, thank you. That's I'm great. By full disclosure, uh, Bill is employed by the Pacers Foundation. Uh, but uh, Bill, as you did this interview, uh, I know one thing on your mind, the Pacers, it's going to be a little tougher for the team to sneak up on, on people this year. Yeah, last year was so unexpected yeah. uh, that nobody knew how the trade was going to work out this year. Yeah. Certainly not the case. Yeah. yeah, even as the Pacers surpassed everyone's predictions last year with a 48-win regular season before pushing Cleveland to the brink in the playoffs, McMillan received scant mention as coach in the Coach of the Year balloting. But he's looking ahead, not behind, as the Pacers look to ride a rising star, Victor Oladipo, into becoming an Eastern Conference contender. And here's the interview. How does the mental... Uh, approach change uh, now that uh, people know who the Indiana Pacers are? Well, we're not going to be afraid of that, and we're not going to, uh, you know, really listen to the outside noise. We didn't listen to it last year when people said that we was at the bottom of the barrel, and now all of a sudden, you know, they, everybody's got us winning it. Uh, it's going to require us to uh, come in and work Again, this is a new year. Uh, this is a new journey, and uh, we're going to have to build, rebuild this all over again. We, we do have some changes from last season, so it's not the same uh, team that we have uh, last year. And the tone setter for that has been Victor Oladipo. He was hungry to prove, uh, you know, to a lot of people and, and to himself uh, that he could play this game and he could play this game at a high level and uh, all season long he came in very confident he worked on his game uh, extreme, extremely hard uh, during the off season came in and got off to a good start and he just rode that confidence he continued to grow and get better and improve and ended up having an all-star season just moving into the st. Vincent Center mm -hmm. uh, what does having that kind of facility mean uh, for your coaching staff, the training staff, yeah. I mean, that's, that's first class. I've been to many of uh, the facilities uh, around the NBA because we have the opportunity to practice there. We have to be one of the top five best facilities. And, you know, the St. Vincent Center has become one of the resources for our players uh, that can help them improve. Uh, the, I mean, the, the places, whatever you need is there. Whatever you need is there. We were in Banker's Life for many years, and we had one floor and, you know, a small weight room and small jacuzzi and all of that. Now we have two floors. All of our offices are uh, in the building. Bigger weight room, bigger jacuzzi. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a recruiting tool. Yeah. It's, it's become a recruiting tool. You know, our free agents, we, we certainly brought those guys in to allow them to see that before they made their decision. North Carolina didn't get recruited by the North Carolina State Wolfpack, went to Chuan Junior mm -hmm. College, uh, blossomed there. Then you got to play, then they noticed. Your mom was an employee at North Carolina yeah. State, and then you got noticed and you went and played two years for the Wolfpack uh, under Jim Valvano. My high school team, I had some good players on that uh, team, and. Uh, a lot of universities was looking at those guys and nobody was paying attention to Nate McMillan except for this uh, junior college called Chawan down in Murfreesboro, uh, North Carolina. And, uh, you know, Coach Bob Burke, who was coaching there, uh, really, it was the best uh, decision uh, for me. And, you know, things just worked out. It was a great junior college. We went to uh, the, the, the final four. Uh, when I was there, I was able to become a All-American, and then NC State comes knocking at my door, and uh, Coach Valvano screamed at his coaching staff uh, because they didn't recruit me in high school, and the fact that my mother was working over at the university, they knew nothing about me. Uh, but when they did come a-calling, uh, I was excited because I lived five minutes from the university, uh, had the opportunity to play for um, NC State and play in the ACC, 
which at that time was it, you know, all the kids, it was their dream to play in the ACC. When you were a kid growing up in Raleigh, North Carolina, did you ever allow yourself to dream that someday you'd be have one of the 30 most coveted jobs in professional basketball? No, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't a dream of mine to uh, play in the NBA, certainly not to coach in the NBA because, you know, from my community, there was nobody who had done that. You know, as I mentioned, the dream for me was to play in the ACC. Yeah. And, you know, there were, you know, kids in the community that uh, played in the ACC. So that was my NBA, to have this opportunity uh, to spend over 30 years uh, in the NBA and have this opportunity to, you know, here I am coaching the Indiana Pacers. Uh, I, I still pinch myself. All right, Bill, great report. Um, Coach mentioned it in the interview. You know, it's largely the same team, but there's definitely some new, an infusion of some new talent that could change the dynamic maybe a little. Oh, well, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, it is a dynamic uh, setting now. Tyreek Evans coming in uh, from Memphis, uh, Kyle O'Quinn from the Knicks, Doug McDermott, who I think yep. will really uh, help him with the outside shooting, and then the uh, new point guard, Aaron Holiday, in a backup role. So, uh, same old teams. Yep. Victor kind of setting the tone, but uh, a new team in a lot of respects. And we'll get it started in a few weeks. You got it. Thanks very much, Thanks, Bill. Gary.